Oh, this is the good stuff. Save covering everything in dirt below. That is not original fascia. They're round nails for a start, not cut nails, and it's a completely different shaping on the front. This gear up here is properly tasty. Look at this. This is original, this one. You can tell by that shaping on the end. These don't look too pretty. Time for a tidy down, and then we're going to remove some slates. So these have been ripped out and I think we should actually be all right. I just tucked something under there to stop the rain getting through the gaps. Now cleared off the bottom course on the front, we should be able to knock down the soffit and get that all cleared off, ready for measuring up for the new timbers. So that is the end of day one. Fairly good progress. Let me show you how we're looking at the front now. Down here at the back, I'm still thinking we can rescue this fascia. It's such a substantial piece of wood and this off it that I don't really want to waste it. There's only one real patch up this end, which is a bit soft. The rest of it is pretty decent. The more I pick away at this and take these, I mean, there must be about two millimeters of paint on here. When all that comes off, we might have preserved, or they might have preserved pretty well this timber. So the, the face we've got here is old growth redwood probably, and it's super solid, super hard. A little bit of rot on one end, but I'm pretty sure that, that could be sort of fixed up and sorted so the only issue might be that when we take the slates off because they're tight down to that fascia that the back of it might be slightly rotten or right on the top because condensation and moisture that's on the back of the slates may have just been sat and trapped in there right day two going to kick off with a load more slates. I'm going to take off the lowest course again like I did at the front 
and that just means they'll get access to seeing what condition the fascia and the soffits are in. The only problem is they appear to have nailed that first coarser slate to the top of the fascia. So I need to make sure I can break those nails off without damaging the fascia too much, just in case we want to keep it. Because they're pretty tight, it's quite hard to get that ripper underneath this bottom slate. See here, they're nailed in, so there's actually no gap at all under there. Completely tight. So that's why I've taken the top one off first. We want to take them all off anyway, this, this row. Um, but these ones might just have to either get the ripper in them above or just snap them out. These are not going to be able to be salvaged because they're half slates. These ones, we want to make sure we get as many of these out whole as we can. Now for once I'm trying to keep everything clean as I go, tidying up as I go to make it safer and easier as I'm working on my own. Uh, so I'll give you a little walk around. So this is the back, still got a little bit of tidying up to do and relocate these slates ready to go. We've got full slates to save, half slates are going. Uh, all this is vacuumed out and hopefully all of this is going to be kept and restored. So there's a few nails to remove still. Down the end here, I've got good gutters here, good slates here. They're all going down once we've got some sort of winch. All right, extended tea break over. I've picked up a load of tools from the workshop, scrapers, sanders, sanders and more sanders to make a start on that rear fascia. So let's go and uh, give that a go. I'm not sure this is the most efficient way to go. Um, I was reluctant to use the belt sander because I thought it would be too severe, but actually it's not going to be any worse than, any more aggressive than that scraper. It now appears I've got a lunch hatch too. Right, we were gonna switch to, I've switched to 80 grit, that's where we were. So I'm gonna see if that gets it off a little bit quicker. This, I've got three of these different shaped tool stripping tools, I guess they are, uh, at a car boot last week. I actually bought them for doing the doors when I restored all the house doors inside. 
but this is perfect for getting out and it almost chips off because it's such thick dry paint it chips off uh, from the inside this shaping here and then this concave is quite handy for you know getting the bottom of that pretty slow tedious work and I'm a little bit uncertain whether I should have just ripped it off and started again but restoration's in the name so we better put it in the game I guess as you may be able to see there's debris netting up now and I didn't pick the colour that's what happens when you let your daughters pick scaffold netting what I wanted to do is sort out some sort of temporary way of protecting the eaves here taking off the bottom two slates because we've removed those slates it means that this gap here goes all the way through and of course we've got a slate missing here because we're trying to protect this woodwork what i want to do is just slip something under there and the best thing for that uh, on a temporary basis is some of this surface protection plastic uh, it's not it's probably about four pounds i think a sheet so just cutting strips of that tuck it under and we can tack it in and then we can fold it back when we need to work on this I think that's going to work pretty well because uh, it, what it means is when I'm working on these faces I can just fold it up, tack it back and then I can either paint, fill, all that malarkey uh, because we're hopefully going to get all of those done before we start on the slate. But the weather is on our side so part of me just wants to tear it all off and at least get the felt on whilst we've got the good weather. The more I look at it, the more it should be replaced. Good morning, folks. Um, we're starting the day with a change of plan entirely. So we spent a, a few hours, a couple of hours, uh, trying to strip back these original faces. And I really liked the idea that we were going to be able to retain them fill them, prime them and give them another really decent innings uh, in that they could have easily outlasted the same again, they're absolutely solid. Now the hope was I was going to sand them back like I had, uh, do a little bit more work on them, fill them and then paint them and then I started looking into uh, breathable wood paints like the linseed paint which was recommended to me and all that is fine but there's some issues with retaining these. Now because of the way a roof is vented you need ventilation at the moment the ventilation is simply provided by a one inch gap at the back of the fascia that's effective and it's continuous but it's also sparrow size and bug size and all sorts of creepy crawly size and it's not the best way to do things now bearing in mind that I've got to replace the fascia and soffit on the other side and around the bay and some of this I think it's going to be better to just replace both sections. Still sticking with timber, I am not going to be going with plastic and I know there's an argument for both sides and I'm getting a lot of messages saying just chuck up plastic and forget about it. 
but it's not quite so simple as that and it's not the route I want to go. What we'll be doing is installing our ventilation at the top of the fascia board so there's a vent basically inside the gutter which gives a free flow ventilation from eaves to eaves. For that reason this fascia needs to be considerably lower. Now of course I could try ripping the 40 millimeters or whatever that I need to remove off here with a circular saw or even a track saw somehow and it's doable but there's screws there's nails and it all could all get a bit messy therefore I'm going to take this off now I'm going to replace it I've ordered some really high quality uh, premium redwood for the sides uh, you know for the fascia and the soffit really high grade paint system and it should be perfect for what we need This wood is stronger, more stable, and in a better condition than most of the skirting boards in the house. It's um, a bit of a crime to remove it, but for the reasons I've said, it's the way we've got to go. Oops, turns out the fascia board was also propping up the cast iron. But at least that's revealed that that was damaged anyway. So with all that removed, nails to come out, all the timber ordered, there's only one thing for it. Next stop, to the top. Oh, and uh, remember, if you can, do it yourself, or you could get a team of roofers in. Yeah, get a team of roofers in. <laughs>